Hi, everyone. Welcome to my talk. My name is Elizabeth, and today I'm going to talk to you about isoform resolution single cell RNA seq using the isoseq method. So, what is the single cell isoseq method? Well, single cell RNA seq is the study of RNA expression at the single cell level. Using short reads, however, we can only capture the three prime end of the transcripts. We can only get gene level information rather than full length isoform information. However, we know from many biological functions and diseases, it is the isoform differences rather than the gene level differences that are the major drivers. To get the single cell information, we also require the sequencing data to have high accuracy. This high accuracy and long read length is provided by the PacBio HiFi reads. PacBio sequencing is a form of circular sequencing. The data that comes out of it is highly accurate, which is important for calling SNPs as well as identifying single cell UMIs and barcode information. In the next two slides, I want to walk you through two publications that have used the single cell isoseq method. In this study, the authors used the 10x single cell data and performed it on postnatal mouse brain, both in the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex. They did, took the same 10x cDNA library, performed both long and short read sequencing. Using the short read sequencing data, they performed single cell clustering analysis to identify the cell types. The long read data was then used to match with the same cell barcodes from the short read data to identify cell type specific isoforms. Using the long read data, not only were they able to discover more than 300 genes that had differential isoform expression, many of those genes were also novel, meaning that they were not annotated in gen code. As an example, on the right hand side here, they found for this particular gene, there was a six base pair microaxon shown in orange and marked by the dotted green lines that there is a microaxon that's preferentially used in various cell types in the hippocampus, but is not used in the prefrontal cortex. In another preprint, the authors use single cell isoseq to study expression changes in hematopoietic stem cells and progenitor cells in young versus aging mice. They were able to see certain isoforms being enriched in certain subclusters. Not only that, they also found that the immunoglobulin gene IgK, the aging process had led to an increased recombination event. Theoretically, any single cell platform that generates full length cDNA can be sequenced on the PAC biosystems. The relative positions of the UMIs and barcodes do not matter. Now I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about the bioinformatics workflow for single cell isoseq. Note that this workflow is an active development. We begin with the HiFi reads that will contain the primers as well as the UMIs and barcodes. The next step is to remove the primers. A common tool used for this is the PacBio tool called Lima. We may then extract the UMI and cell barcode information using an isoseq tool called isoseq3 tag. We can then deduplicate founder molecules based on the UMI barcode information using the tool isoseq3 dedupe. The deduplicated transcript sequences can then be classified against a reference annotation such as GenCode using a tool called Sconti. Sconti was designed specifically for the classification and QC of long read transcriptome. In the next slide, I will briefly describe the classification system that was developed with Sconti. Given a reference transcript here shown in black, if an isoseq transcript matches the reference by every splice junction perfectly, it is considered a full splice match. If it's a partial but perfect match, 
to a reference, but missing one or more of the five prime or three prime exons, it is an incomplete splice match. There are two classifications for novel isoforms. Novel and catalog are novel isoforms using a combination of known donor and acceptor sites. Novel not in catalog are novel isoforms that use at least one novel donor or acceptor site. After transcript classification and filtering, we now have an isoform count matrix. This matrix can then be carried on for tertiary single cell analysis. A description of how this workflow is currently carried out is in the URL listed in this slide. Now I will describe an exciting technological advancement for increasing throughput on PAC biodata using concatenation. Fundamentally, concatenation is just the joining of cDNA or DNA molecules. Because PacBio smart sequencing is circular sequencing, and because our current raw read length exceeds often over 100 kilobases, given that the insert size of a transcriptome is usually 1 to 3 kb, we can easily concatenate these molecules into longer pieces to make, say, a 15 or 20 kilobase library. Shown on the right hand side is one such concatenation method using a six base pair sticky user overhang to concatenate single cell molecules. I'm presenting this also as an ASHG poster. We were then able to follow up with sequencing and bioinformatic deconcatenation, deduplication, and all the isoseq analysis that I've just shown you a few slides before. Here I'm showing you a bit more information from my ASSG poster. Applying the concatenation method, the two PBMC 10X samples, we were able to achieve a deconcatenate read death of seven to eight million full length reads. We show that despite having fewer quote unquote reads per single cell, we were able to recapitulate the same cell types with the much deeper coverage of short reads that only gave you gene level information. An even higher throughput increase was demonstrated earlier this week at the PacBio ASSG workshop. Authors from the Broad Institute developed MOS ISOSeq, which enforces a 15 fold concatenation that increased the throughput of up to 20 million deconcatenated high quality hi-fi reads or up to 40 million if including some of the lower quality reads. Once again, they were able to recapitulate the cell types using long read data. Furthermore, the full length information captured differential isoform usage of CD45 isoforms that were not detectable either using short reads or site seek. So how does the addition of concatenation changes the bioinformatics workflow I've shown earlier? Very little in fact. If we look at this chart, all we are adding is a layer of deconcatenation so that we may begin the rest of our in informatics workflow with reads that look like if they had not been concatenated. For those interested in following the MOS ISOSeq data set and the Bioformax workflow, I am showing the GitHub repo that you may access. For all general single cell ISOSeq information, you can go to isoseq.how. Finally, I want to show you what is now an exciting possibility with single cell ISOSeq, and that is phasing. In 2020, my co-authors and I showed that with a tool called isophase that we developed, we can phase isoseq data on whole transcriptome. We show that this is possible because the high fi read accuracy and the full length information makes identifying allele specific isoforms relatively straightforward. In that paper, we applied this to maize whole transcriptome data. Importantly, if we can phase isoforms, this would lead us to seeing the coding consequences. Here is an example of applying isophase to the PBMC 10x data I'd shown earlier. In this IGV screenshot, each alignment is an allele-specific isoform expressed in a certain cell type. 
Some cell types, such as the CD14 monocytes, had a much higher isoform diversity than the other cell types. Each allele-specific isoform is colored either red or green based on the two SNPs present in the transcribed region of this gene. While this is just a test case, we can begin to see how we may identify patterns of cell type-specific allele-specific isoform expressions. To summarize, the single cell isoseq method reveals cell type specific full length isoform information. We've shown that there are now several attempts of concatenation of single cell molecules to increase throughput while having minimal effects on the bioinformatics workflow. There is an increasing uh, suite of tools developed both at PacBio and in the community for supporting such single cell data. And finally, I find the idea of being able to phase single cell ICC data very exciting. Thank you for listening to my talk. If you're interested in single cell or bulk ICOSeq, please visit these resources. Thank you.